before going into the actual system that we have here, let me explain a little bit to you um, uh, the context of the system. So, um, uh, as perhaps some of you might know, Malta, being a very small country, has a very small agricultural sector. Okay? Um, uh, it has major challenges, so the agricultural sector has major challenges, and uh, um, if I had to mention the three biggest challenges, I would say the first one is water, and uh, Malta is a semi-arid country, around 500 millimeters of precipitation every year, no rivers and no lakes, okay? So um, the water that we get is from the groundwater, okay, and desalinized seawater, okay. So the water that we get in the tap, 50% groundwater, 50% desalinized um, uh, seawater, okay. Because obviously most farms um, uh, are not near the sea, but inland, most of them rely on groundwater, okay. And by, mo by, most of, uh, by most of them, I mean more than 90% okay, rely on groundwater. Now, throughout the years, there was no policy or no management, no central management of groundwater. And so farmers could just dig a hole okay, into the ground and start extracting as much water as they needed, free. And they still do that now. I mean, now, now they cannot dig any more holes because it's banned but they can extract as much water as they wanted, okay? And obviously there was abuse. There were people that used to dig, um, uh, dig boreholes under you know, the, the guise of being farmers, but then selling the water to swimming pool owners, for example, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and it continued. And obviously now we have a situation in which groundwater is extremely saline, okay? Um, because you have um, so, uh, seawater intrusion, okay, it's becoming more saline, um, uh, and uh, obviously crops cannot grow very well in very saline water, okay? And apart from that, we had a big, big issue with nitrate leaching, okay? With farmers applying organic and inorganic fertilizers, okay? And leaching, and, uh, and then the, the, the nitrate leaching down to the ground. And the, Euro the European Union um, allows a maximum of 50 by 0 0.50 milligrams per liter of nitrate in the groundwater. In some places in Malta, the concentration of nitrate is 500 okay? um, milligrams um, uh, per liter. So it's extremely, extremely polluted in some places, okay? in agriculturally intensive areas. Um, um, and uh, so we are faced with a situation where farmers, you know, they have to use the water. They, they don't have, in Malta, we do not have a fully functional extension or advisory service for farmers. So farmers, they can, you know, they, they do um, whatever they think is best without having anyone to guide them, okay? Um, uh, and uh, so that is the first problem, the water problem. The second problem is the land. Okay, Malta is very small. The average um, uh, land size, uh, the, the average farm size in Malta is of one hectare. Okay, is of one hectare. That's the average land size um, uh, of, of, of a farm. Okay, and with one hectare, farmers have to earn a living, basically. Okay, so if it's of one, one, one example, um, uh, farmers cannot afford to leave their land fallow. Okay, so, so without without working it because it it would be a waste of land. They cannot afford it. Okay, and of, and then there are problems with land fragmentation. So farms <coughs> becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. Greenhouses is a way to intensify the production to try and cultivate high value crops and to fetch a good price on the market. So to grow tomatoes when the when the the, the supply of tomatoes is not very high in, in the winter months, for example. So, um, the substrate here that is used is um, uh, general purpose compost. It's, it's, it's there only for um, anchorage, okay? Um, uh, so, it's, it's role is not like to, to provide nutrients for the, for, for the plant. It's just, it's just there for, for, um, uh, for anchorage. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, 
we tried different composts and we found this to be a, a good compost for um, for planting. Okay, the, the seeds are placed in these. Obviously, so we have comp we have the compost there. Seeds are placed there. Okay, um, and then when they when they are um, a couple of centimeters high, okay, we tran we transplant them in these pots. Okay, <laughs> we fill them with compost, put the seedling inside. Okay. Put them, <coughs> put them um, in these trays. That we have a small greenhouse that we use as a nursery, okay. And then once, um, uh, once again they grow a, a, a little bit more, we place them in the system itself. We extract water from the borehole, okay, from the ground. Then we we'll put it in a well, okay, in our well. Um, we place 1,000 liters of, of that water in a measuring tank. Add the fertilizers. Okay, at the fertilizers, then that amount of water goes to a reservoir and uh, it's, 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 it's pumped into the system. Okay, so from, so from the um, groundwater to the well, to the measuring tank, to the reservoir and then to the system. We do not top up. We do not top up. We use the tank, um, uh, we, we use the tank, the complete tank, and then when it's empty, we fill it up again. The pump is switched on in the night. It's switched off. Okay, during the night, it's switched off. So um, now in winter, um, the pump um, switches on again, depending depending on uh, the it's raining and it's cloudy, etc. But um, usually it's, it switches on for around um, ten minutes, five to ten minutes. Something important that you mentioned is the fact that. Um, from end of June, temperature is, temperatures here are so high, okay, that production has to stop. Okay, um, uh, production has to stop till around the first week of September. The temperature sometimes go up to 47, 48 degrees. Okay, 47, 48 degrees. Okay, um, it's really, really hot. Okay, and uh, the roots start to crumble almost. Okay, so we we tried different ways to chill the water, but we did, we were not very, very successful with those. Okay, again, some of them are very energy intensive. One lettuce, okay, takes, okay, approximately because it varies because of the of the um, season around one month to grow. So basically, a greenhouse like this, not that, okay, this one, um, is around 10,000 euros to build. Now, the plastic needs um, is replaced every three years. As you can see, there is a ventilation, there's ventilation there. Um, now, these greenhouses are not exactly the best types of greenhouses in Malta, okay? Um, uh, ideally, greenhouses in Malta, as now we are constructing, should have ventilation up there, okay? And not there, okay? okay? Not there. There is a there is a um, uh, there is a window over there and a window over there. Um, uh, it maintains too much heat. Okay, using using this type of ventilation. The ventilation up there, okay, would would, would uh, make heat escape better. Okay. Um, now, the setup. Okay, to set up all this with the channels and the chains and everything, it um, and the pumps and all the all the system, it costs around another ten thousand euros. If we decide to um, uh, empty everything and um, uh, put the greenhouses, the seedlings, all at once, so the 10,000 lettuce at once, okay, it would cost 500 euros. The seedlings, it's, uh, the, the plants, would cost six, um, uh, 500 euros to buy the seedlings. And uh, you, you need around 100 euros of compost. Okay, 100 euros of compost for this, for the anchorage. Okay? Um, now, the pots, the pots, Cost again to buy 10,000 euros. Again, we are, I'm, I'm talking about Maltese prices. Okay, um, 600 euros. Okay, for 10,000 pots. Okay. Okay. You can Maltese prices. Pots are not recycled. Okay, um, uh, because it would one because of, of, of diseases. Approximately, we need around three euros of fertilizers every day. I, that, that's what we use here. Okay, around three euros of fertilizers every day. We also need around four euros every day worth of electricity for the pump. What about labor? So the the labor that's mostly required is to transplant, as we said, okay? Okay. So um, 
Again, talking about 10,000, but not as much as this. Not as much as this. For 10,000 plants, um, uh, a person would need four, around four days to transplant. Okay, four days. Um, to get the transplant from the small holes to the pots. Um, and half a day, half a day to put them in place. Okay? Then, um, uh, approximately, you need one and a half days to harvest. Okay? Because, and to harvest, you just do this, remove the pot, and put it in the box. Okay? So, and again, an advantage over, over commercial, uh, over open air, um, uh, open air fields is that you don't need to give the soil a rest. Okay? Because uh, you know, outside you, you, you need to give the soil a rest, you need to um, fertilize, etc. Um, uh, with, with this type of, um, of system, you can remove one plant and at the same time put another. Okay, harvest one, put another. So that, that's a big advantage. So basically, each box with six lettuce, okay, this is an approximate price because it can vary a lot, but each box with six lettuce costs three euros. Most farmers. Most farmers in Malta take their produce to an auction house. Okay, so the, an, an auction house. So um, a place where they have, they have middlemen, <coughs> and then the middlemen try to sell it to. So it's not exactly a wholesaler; it's more of an auction. In this case, um, uh, the produce is sold directly to restaurants, to hotels, sometimes to wholesalers, but it's not sold to the auction house. And uh, using that method, um, uh, the farmer gets a little bit more. We don't have any major issues with quality. Um, uh, we try to make sure as, as, as much as possible that we have a, a, a uniform pro um, product. Um, uh, we, do, we do check um, uh, that, no, that there is no tip burn okay, on, on the leaf, so there is no scorching of the leaf, um, and if there is, we remove them. There isn't a higher price because the product is grown in a hydroponic zone or in a more environmentally friendly manner, etc. Okay? There is no labeling, okay, no labeling for um, soil agriculture for hydroponics um, uh, in Malta, and uh, and so we, a, a consumer will not know that that particular lettuce was cultivated in a soilless, in a soilless system. Now, um, this is a labor-intensive crop. Because with tomatoes, you have to lower the tomatoes. Okay, so as, as you can see, the tomatoes, okay, climb around the string. When it reaches this high, okay, they are lowered. Okay, so each one has to be lowered. Okay, so when it's this big, it has to be lowered so that um, it is mm. it is um, laid down horizontally, and and then given more vertical space um, to grow. Okay. <clears throat> so apart from that, um, there is. Um, leaf pruning that has to be done. So the lower leaves have to be removed mm -hmm. okay, of each plant, <clears throat> and then um, you you have pollination. Pollination is usually done by bumblebees. Okay, the, the, the bumblebee hive. Okay, and uh, and usually the bumblebees um, uh, pollinate the crop. Now, approximately the price of tomatoes it varies a lot. Okay, between October and June the price varies a lot. And if I had to give an average, it would be around one euro twenty cents a kilo. An average. It can go up to three euros. It can go down down to twenty cents, thirty cents a kilo. A plant gives around ten kilograms of tomatoes every season. In Malta, as in other places, um, uh, countries in, in in Europe and in the Mediterranean, um, we had a huge loss of the tomato crop due to the tuta absoluta, which is a moth. Okay, a moth which um, uh, which is very difficult to control, okay, and uh, which is also very pesticide resistant. Okay, so uh, sometimes you can see you can see the moths flying. Okay, you can see the, the moths flying, um, uh, and uh, again these are very very problematic pests to control. Whitefly, whitefly as well, um, but it's they're very controllable. Okay, they're very controllable, but it's not absolute that this moth um, is, is very very difficult to control.